super, super interesting to be here now at this very moment, also representing the Netherlands in Venice. Uh, I think it's a, these are all issues that I, um, I'm very interested to talk about and I wanted to talk about in Venice as well. People don't let me talk really, but okay. Um, I, I wanted to uh, just pre present a little part of a work that I actually shot in the Tropper Museum as a, I mean, I use the Tropper Museum as a location, as a setting. Um, and therefore, it's maybe interesting as a very direct uh, relationship with what, uh, what is being discussed here. Also, um, so let me just quickly introduce the work. It's called La Javanese, and uh, it's dealing uh, around, it's, it's trying to address issues around the uh, production of what is now called uh, African print cloth, or it's called Dutch wax, or uh, wax hollandaise, produced in the Netherlands only by one uh, company still that is called Flisco. But it was um, actually it comes out of a uh, process that started in the mid 19th century where some companies tried to uh, industrialize the Javanese um, technique of batik and try to so industrialize it to make it uh, fast production. And actually, the whole idea was to bring it back to the market in Indonesia, which didn't really happen. Uh, or it didn't happen successfully. And so what happened with the, with the production of this material uh, was that it became much more, um, much more popular in the west coast of Africa, where it then became something that we can really talk about. I mean, it's a very interesting process about the idea of uh, authenticity, because it becomes an African product. However, if we just look at the contemporary, it is produced in the Netherlands. And this I found really interesting that um, as it is produced in the Netherlands, so and um, actually the the recent developments of the company Flisco are also have uh, inspired me to make this work, which is that they instead of keeping their status as a um, um, textile industry, which was that what they were always, they were threatened by the industry of um, cheaper cloth, but with the same patterns, real imitation, like directly reprinted in a very different technique by the Chinese. And this prompted them to reinvent themselves as a fashion company, and which led actually to a very different form of display. And this I found interesting, and it's also one of the reasons I took the uh, Tropa Museum as a setting, because that's where we're also talking about forms of display. And so these are the two kind of issues that bring these things together. There are other actually nice anecdotal uh, relationships between the Tropa Museum and Vlisco, because one also, a very interesting fact is that none of the directors or one of the, none of the people, um, let's say, in the guiding, in the higher up positions of Vlisco had ever been to Africa until the 1920s, when the, the director that was then director went and had, um, he was actually very enchanted by African culture and brought back many goods <laughs> and artifacts. And he was also, uh, from the 1920s on, a member of the board of the Chopper Museum. So there is a link also in a kind of a personal sense. Um, so that said, what I also wanted to look at quickly was uh, who are the models that are modeling these clothes if the photographs for the fashion shoots are taken in the Netherlands. So I thought maybe they were Dutch and that could have been really interesting, like what does a Dutch uh, model imagine that an African woman is uh, needing, let's say, I mean what is the representation there? So I was looking at who were the models, and of course there were Dutch Caribbean models, but mainly not. Mainly were African models coming from all over the world. And I got in personal contact with uh, one of the models called Sonia Wanda. She's Sudanese and was brought up in Oslo. So from she's six years old, she was in Oslo, and that's actually where she has her formation. So again, a very um, circular, very circulating kind of um, um, identity for, for also for her. Uh, she was very uh, enthusiastic and willing to, to embark on this experiment. Um, and I, apart from her, I invited two other players, as I call them, because the people that you see in the work are not actors. They are people that I've invited to participate. And all of the dialogue is actually basically created by them and not by me. So all the words you hear, all the things I use as a, in the edit is uh, something that comes out of this, um, this work process. Um, so who I invited with her is Charles Landvrecht, who is a very important artist, writer, uh, theorist, and curator here in the Netherlands. 
He's from Suriname, but as I know him already a long time, I knew that he also in a former life was a model. So it was very interesting, and he's very interested in popular culture and fashion, and he, uh, it was interesting to bring him in contact with Sonia and also with the idea of the style and fashion of Flisco. Uh, he is there directly with, uh, with Sonia in the museum, and uh, as a third player, um, I invited David Dibosa, who is um, um, he's a, a theorist, writer, um, actually, uh, the same as Charles, apart from the artist, but he's currently also head of uh, theory in uh, Chelsea School of Art in London, and has, um, he's the author of a book called Post-Critical Museology, where his research is a lot on museums and their audiences. He's of the Nigerian descent, and he bought a lot of a Dutch wax cloth for his mother, always. So there were all the connections. Um, so I'm gonna, oh yeah, and then one more thing before I'm showing a few fragments of the piece, because one of the things that, uh, as and now I'm just explaining the, the history of, the, of the, in, the contents of the work, the structure of the piece is very much related to the relationship between sound and image. And the relationship between sound, sound and image is one of dependency, but also of independency, as uh, filmmakers like Odar have shown us. And in this piece, I particularly wanted to challenge them where I made uh, a piece, that's what I show here, of, that has two image lines. They are um, presented on two sides of one sort of placard. Let me see if this, yeah, there's the other side. So that's just the way that the, the piece is presented. There are two 25-minute uh, image lines, and they are accompanied by one soundtrack. So on each image line, we would be hearing the soundtrack and listening to a dialogue that fits that image line, but it fits both. That's the fun. And then in the 25 minutes, I actually repeated one image line twice. So we have 12 and a half minutes of one image, and then we get the same image line again. And it's also kind of a route through the museum. Um, that means that the, the soundtrack continues. So again, you see something that you saw before, only you hear something different, and the whole memory meaning is going to do something different, let's say. Let's see. So I am going to show you that by um, showing two fragments of the same sound line with a different image, and then I'll show you something else. It's going to take three, three and a half minutes per <coughs> fragment. I have, I have many, many friends that I started working with, and even now they're they're off doing their own thing and like I say, it's the industry so you can get very, very lonely and you start hanging around with a lot of people who see you but again, I think not, you, you can't always go around being false, you always have to stay true to yourself, exactly and a lot of people, they get very lost and very, very confused yes. in this industry, they get new girls all the time Now there's so many black girls that are actually doing it well in the industry, but they're like, I think a lot of them is extremely fed up and tired. First of all, flying here and there, and maybe they're not getting the amount that they want to get for their work. And, uh, Yeah, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> I think one of yeah another one of the craziest challenges I ever did was to go to Pakistan. You went to Pakistan. To, yeah, to Islamabad and do Fashion Week there. <gasps> so there in the beginning, obviously, it's a bit intense because a lot of the model girls are not used to having somebody like me, and um, from my my world where I come from, I think it's beautiful to have different model girls on the runway mm -hmm. and I'm used to having girls from Asia or Africa, you know, Brazil. It's a multicultural fashion show. We have yeah. to represent girls from all over the world. And so did they, could they appreciate it? In the beginning it was a bit hard because I'm used to, okay, we're doing a rehearsal. Yeah. I'm going to be there for the rehearsal at that time and then, you know, go and do my show. 
go quickly in now. Yeah. You know, they're like, Sonia, you're up next. I already know what it is I'm going to do. Yeah. And take and see the choreography, whatever. You know, because we're so always so fast in mm -hmm. London, Paris, mm -hmm. New York, like every six months. And there, it was still a bit new, but we learned a lot from yeah. each other, you know? And uh, so many of the girls were so talented and very, very beautiful as well. So it was a pleasure to be amongst them, you know? Yeah. And it's nice to see how fashion de is developing in, yeah. in different parts of the world. <laughs> when the wind will kill us. <laughs> oh dear. Are you cold? A little bit. Huh? A little bit. The sun is out outside. I know, I just want to go out and have a nice... Hmm. I'm gonna act it out. I have many, many friends that I started working with and even now they're, they're off doing their own thing. And like I say, it's the industry, so you can get very, very lonely and you start hanging around with a lot of people who see you. But again, I think not, you, you can't always go around being false. You always have to stay true to yourself, exactly. And a lot of people, they get very lost and very, very confused yes. in this industry. They get new girls all the time. Now there's so many black girls that are actually doing it well in the industry, but they're like, I think a lot of them is extremely fed up and tired. First of all, flying here and there, and maybe they're not getting the amount that they want to get for their work and uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> I think one of, yeah, another one of the craziest challenges I ever did was to go to Pakistan. You went to Pakistan? To, yeah, to Islamabad and do fashion week there. <gasps> so there in the beginning, obviously, it's a bit intense because a lot of the model girls are not used to having somebody like me. And um, from my, my world, where I come from, I think it's beautiful to have different model girls on the runway. Mm -hmm. And I'm used to having girls from Asia or Africa, you know, Brazil. It's a multicultural fashion show. We have yeah. to represent girls from all over the world. And so did they, could they appreciate it? In the beginning, it was a bit hard because I'm used to, okay, we're doing a rehearsal. Yeah. I'm gonna be there for the rehearsal at that time and then, you know, go and do my show go quickly in now, yeah. you know? They're like, Sonia, you're up next. I already know what it is I'm gonna do. Yeah. And take and see the choreography, whatever, you know? Cause we're so, always so fast in mm -hmm. London, Paris, mm -hmm. New York, like every six months. And there, it was still a bit new, but we learned a lot from yeah. each other, you know? And uh, so many of the girls were so talented and very, very beautiful as well. So it was a pleasure to be amongst them, you know? Yeah. And it's nice to see how fashion de is developing in, yeah. in different parts of the world. <laughs> when the wind will kill us. <laughs> oh, dear. And then we have, this is the West. And that's the cooperation. I see. So this is how they, they want us to believe that it was. How old is this building anyways? 19th century. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
So this is what, uh, what was it before here then? It was the uh, Colonial Institute. Oh, wow. Yes, you know. So it's like these, these where they put together all these, uh, all mm. we shouldn't talk, all we can talk to our teeth, like yes. this. Museum talking about a past, but talking about a present, and maybe a future as well. But I, I'm just being a little bit. I don't know if 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 I would come here with my child. Mm. There's a lot to see here. It's almost a bit too much to see. <laughs> so I wanted to, oh sorry, I wanted to finish there, but I also quickly wanted to say that this last piece, this was obviously from another part of the film, so you see the repetition of that image with another sound. And um, another thing is that there are obviously a lot of um, lines that I try to combine, which are to do with authenticity. And I, I found the KW story really interesting because Flisco calls itself the true authentic, which is already kind of um, ironic, I would say, and, um, and weave them. And so it's kind of interesting how that weaving process maybe uh, relates also to the repetition and looping of the sound and, um, and also of textiles. So that was it for now. Thank you.